Why do some test scores vary so much? Have you ever wondered why in a classroom some students score very differently on the same test, while others have almost identical scores? This variation can be quite puzzling, while others are almost the same? This phenomenon isn't just limited to test scores, it can be observed in various aspects of life from sports to daily activities. Today we're diving into standard deviation. This term might sound a bit intimidating at first, but don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll see that it's a straightforward and incredibly useful concept. Sounds fancy, but it's really just a way to measure how spread out numbers are. Think of it as a tool that helps us understand the variability or consistency within a set of data. Imagine you and your friends are bowling. Each of you takes turns, and at the end of the game, you compare your scores. If everyone's scores are close, like 90, 91, and 89, that's low standard deviation. This means that all of you performed similarly with little variation in your scores, but if you've got scores like 60, 180, that's high standard deviation. This indicates a wide range of performance levels among your group. Why does it matter? Understanding this can give us insights into consistency and predictability. Well, it helps us understand consistency. For instance, in sports, knowing the standard deviation of a player's performance can reveal how reliable they are. In sports, it can show if a player is super consistent or all over the map. A low standard deviation means the player performs at a similar level each time, while a high standard deviation indicates fluctuating performance. In school, it can tell if everyone got similar grades or if there was a big mix. Teachers can use this information to understand how well the class as a whole is grasping the material. To calculate it, you find the average of your numbers. This is the first step in understanding the spread of your data then see how far each number is from that average. This step involves determining the deviation of each data point from the mean. Square those distances, find the average of the squares. Squaring the deviations ensures that negative and positive deviations do not cancel each other out, and then take the square root. This final step gives you the standard deviation, bringing the units back to the original scale of the data. Bam, that's your standard deviation. It might seem like a lot of steps, but each one is crucial for accurately measuring the spread of your data. But don't worry, you don't always have to do the math yourself. There are plenty of tools and calculators available that can do the heavy lifting for you. There are calculators and tools that can do it for you. These tools can save you time and ensure accuracy, especially when dealing with large data sets. So next time you hear someone talking about standard deviation, you'll know it's all about understanding the spread of numbers. It's a powerful concept that can be applied in many areas of life. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool math tips. See you next time. Keep exploring and stay curious. Life. You'll know it's